As well as searching through Primo, you can also go to particular databases to search and this can be useful particularly if you're not sure of search terms that you can use to research your topic or area because the more, uh, the more specific and the more number of topics that you can look for, the richer the resources that you're going to have returned. Now, one, what you, there are two ways you can go about finding relevant uh, databases. You can go down these lists here. There's one here for education and teaching and one for information and library studies, and they will take you directly to databases that are useful for finding articles on those topics. I want to show you the A plus education database because this is an Australian database and so because you're looking for mostly Australian uh, based research this is a really great place to start although I do encourage you to look more broadly but let's just look at this one for the time being now when we go into the database we can see that we're logged in to the Charles Sturt University source here and there are a number of different ways that we can do a search in this uh, database. Now you can see that you can do uh, just an introductory search, you can do an advanced search which allows you to hone in more deeply into the database and to put together a more complex search. And when you scroll down, you can see that there are some search tips here which are incredibly useful. And I would encourage you to download this advanced search guide because this gives you some really useful expert searching techniques that you can uh, use usually across lots of different databases. Each database will have slightly different ways and strategies, but the essentials, for example, the Boolean operators, are going to be the same in each uh, database. And so this can be a really useful guide for you to have um, available when you're doing your searches. So let's just go back to uh, our database here. Let's do a search on this Informat database. And let's go back with my old favourite inquiry learning. Now we can see that uh, this search, there's lots of options to limit your search. I'm going to tick full text only because I'm not interested in articles where there's only an abstract available. And I'm also going to uh, click on um, only show content I have access to just to save me time. I'll do a search for those things. Now let's have a look here and see what comes up. Now there's quite a few resources that have come up, 1,339, and I can see that these are some of the most common authors. So I might make a note of those and come back to looking at those. Um, these are accessible here, so I can easily download them. I can easily preview the abstract to see if the article is about something that's relevant to me. Now you can see that these are all peer-reviewed articles and that they come from a variety of different databases within the Informat collection. Now there's lots of information here that I can use to limit. So for example, I only want to know about inquiry based learning from about 2018. I want really recent information. So now I've got still 205 articles that I can draw upon for my research here. So that was actually quite useful. Um, now let's see if I put inverted commas around my search for inquiry learning. Uh, let's see if that changes the amount of resources that are returned and yes it is a, a little bit less 115 because now we're looking only for this particular um, phrase this exact phrase inquiry learning it's not about separating the two the two words and looking for each one individually 
Now in a database, I can use certain operators to help me hone down my, my research. Uh, so I might choose inquiry learning and primary. Now remember this is an Australian database, so I'm going to use the word primary because that's the term that we use for primary school here in Australia. So if I do a quick search on that, you can see that I've got 43 results and these are going to be narrowed down most probably looking at primary school uh, experiences of inquiry learning. So let's just for argument's sake do inquiry, learning and elementary just to see the difference that language can make. So we had 43, now we've got none. So you can see how using the word that reflects the language of the database is very important. I'm now in the EBSCOhost database and I got there simply by going to that A to Z databases and clicking on Academic Search Complete EBSCOhost which took me to this page here. Now unlike uh, the Informat A plus Education this is a US based database and so let's test our language choices and see how they have an impact on our results. Now we'll stick with our inquiry learning again and you can see here that this is actually quite interesting. It brings up a range of different terms that we might want to use uh, that, are, that, that are common in this database based on what other people have searched in the past. So this is an interesting little help guide here. For the time being, let's just put in inquiry learning and primary uh, and let's just see what comes up. Do our search and we've got 68. So you can see that the term primary has been used. However, interestingly, it has also been used in a different way, a different terminology where this is analyzing primary sources. So this is where we also need to be careful of the way that we choose our topics and our search terms and not just assume that everything that comes up is going to be relevant even if it uses the same word. Now remember this was an American site so let's change this now to elementary. We had 68 articles in our with primary. Let's go to elementary and see if that makes a difference. We have 85 now. Now that's not a great deal more but it is certainly more than before and I wonder also how many of those primary uh, articles were actually using the word in the way of meaning a primary source document rather than uh, in primary schooling. Now this can be quite tricky knowing what terms to use and so in EBSCOhost there's actually a really handy tool that you can use up here and it's called subject terms. It's a bit like a thesaurus for our subject terms and if we go to this term it basically has all of the different subject terms. It's like the authority files of the database if you like. It's not really exactly that but let's look up inquiry and see what it suggests we might use instead or as well as inquiry. So here it's suggesting that if we are looking for articles on inquiry-based learning, we actually use that term with a hyphen. If we're looking for inquiry education, we're looking for inquiry method. So if we're looking for, uh, here we go, inquiry-based learning. So you can see how it gives us different terms that we can use. Now if we click on this term, inquiry-based learning, it will then give us broader terms and narrower terms that we can use to really hone in and look more specifically. Now this can be a really useful way to generate search terms that you then take back to the library catalogue and apply where you can search across different databases. It can just be an interesting way to generate those terms. So let's try another, let's, let's try ICT in education and see what comes up when we look for that one. Now you can see here that uh, 
it said that they can't find ICT in education at all, that uh, they do they do recognise ICT 4D and they suggest we use information and communication technologies for development. So maybe we might look at that and see what that actually is all about. And we can see that it brings up a whole range of things and none of them actually apply to ICT in the way that we generally use the term in Australia. So knowing about these subject terms and being able to search using these um, tools, able to deepen our understanding of the topics that we're using and reveal to us terms that we might find more useful when we are doing our searches.